how do we scale to multiple clubs and how have we done that um, since June? So there are challenges first, so let's think about them. So compared to a single club, um, there's a massive workload across our portfolio of clubs. And it's worth considering that we need to balance and satisfy all expectations across them. If we're not careful, we could be seen as the outsiders, especially as we work at the holding group level. And we need to be wary of things like differences in preferences in process, views of football and data suppliers. You're no longer at one club where there's usually a unified vision of how things should be done. Uh, final couple of points to consider as well, where there could be cultural uh, or language barriers, um, which are just natural, especially with the portfolio across multiple nations. So you have to make sure there's always a su successful mode of communication. And finally, uh, there is non-stop football 12 months of the year in the multi-club model. So how do you solve the technical part? Well, that again, I would say is the easier part to solve. Uh, standardize data suppliers where possible. Uh, make sure that everybody is reading off the same page where they can and getting the same information across all five or six clubs. I say where possible because obviously some leagues have deals with specific tracking data suppliers that are out of your control. Um, so if they have different tracking or different GPS vests sometimes and you, you've got a longer contract on those, you can't change that. But where you can standardize things, that's ideal because then everybody's getting the same information and the same baseline raw statistics. Centralized databasing is really obvious. It's something you would do at one club anyway, but it makes even more sense to do it. And it's a really easy win to do at the group level because all clubs can then leverage the same data infrastructure. Have consistent insight delivery timings and report structures. So this is key. Build around how all of your different clubs work. Figure out what their workloads are. Figure out how their match weeks work. And try to give them the most consistent uh, insights reports that are consistent across clubs where possible. So again, everybody's getting the same quality of information where possible. The insight report walkthroughs are even more important. When you're part of a multi-club, you're actually generally remote with some visits. So having a lot of time on Zoom or Teams calls to walk through every single new bit of work is even more important because you don't have the serendipity of working in a club and just having a coffee with someone and going through it in five minutes. You need to think about these things in advance and schedule them and be semi-formal about them. And finally, and a really important one not to forget as a, as a benefit of the um, multiple model is it's not just the challenge, it's also a benefit, you know. Uh, you have to be open, you have to have an open process to receive feedback, to iterate and improve on your work. The benefit of having uh, clubs across the world, across different models of football, is that they all have different things they bring to the table and you can work with. So on the non-technical side, the key things to making this success, a success are good structure and links. So we have five main clubs that we work with directly um, as an analytics department, uh, Genoa, Standard Liège, Red Star Paris, Vasco da Gama and Melbourne Victory. There's a central analytics department of three of us who cover all the technical work and all three of us have contact points at each of the clubs that are developed at the earliest point possible. A minimum of like each club, you need to have a good relationship with at least the sporting director and a technical member of staff on the coaching staff. It doesn't have to be the same across all clubs, but having a similar structure to um, deliver new insights across all clubs and have that process set up is absolutely vital to make a success of a central analytics department. The other thing is, ideally, I've found that it's easier to start lean in terms of how many staff you have, have the flattest hierarchy possible and have people who can be club facing and can talk to people and work with people as well as do the technical side. So at 777, I've got um, my director of uh, sort of R&D, um, Dan Nickel, and uh, senior data scientist, Elliot Stapley. Um, they're both experienced with football data, and they're both good at communicating with people. The way we work is that any um, person from these clubs can approach any one of us directly. It doesn't have to go through me as the head. That would slow things down. And also, it prevents us building um, useful relationships um because it minimizes our point of contact with the clubs 
we need to focus on their needs and that means maximum amount of availability. So starting lean with a flat hierarchy um, is key to this and especially to the communication part, which will make this a success. On that last point, the FaceTime is key. Um, the 777 uh, analytics department, all three members of us at the moment uh, attend games uh, at all the clubs where possible. So uh, Liège, Genoa, uh, Red Star Paris, and soon we'll be you know, visiting Melbourne Victory and Vasco de Gama once the season restarts. And it's important to show your face because you are actually invested in what's going on. So you do need to feel actually what's going on in the clubs. You need to build personal relationships with people at the clubs. You're always more personable if you've had any time on the ground with someone versus just being remote. And the other thing is it just allows good periods of time with club practitioners and staff, allows you just uh, conversations to happen spontaneously, ideas to be formed in a, in a less formal setting. So having that face time, especially in the multi-club and being prepared to travel and all your members of your team being prepared to spend time traveling is absolutely key. Another key, as I mentioned earlier, was the balance of consistent um, KPI rec reporting and uh, with some flexibility. So this is the 80-20 rule I talked about at Leicester. It's just as important across these clubs. So we have uh, set pre-match report um, that every club gets from us based on needs that they've expressed to us. And what we do on top of that is any ad hoc work that we think each club might reuse um, is prioritized especially if it's specific to either their game model or their game situation or their part of the season. It's really important to have both halves of this. You need consistency across the whole group. So everybody's speaking the same language and able to compare against each other uh, and build a synergy that way. But you also need the flexibility because football is varied. People's approaches to playing the game is varied and their goals, especially even across your own portfolio of clubs, will be varied. So you need to be covered in all those situations and have the bandwidth to do that work. So I've gone through quite a lot of content there um, from my early approaches to analytics um, through building at Leicester into some like early learnings here for building in a multi-club. But I think this slide really is just my key takeaways for making analytics a success uh, in a multi-club. First point is just always remember, even more so than an individual club, you're part of a social and a cultural endeavor here. Be prepared to build for more diverse situations, different game models and different recruitment challenges. Um, so different styles of play across even our portfolio of clubs based on the leagues where we've bought. Uh, we have to be aware that, that that's uh, the case on the ground. So we need to be able to build around that. The recruitment challenges, some of our clubs are salary capped, others aren't. So again, that needs to be built for and addressed. Need to, the technical easy win is just build efficient and comprehensive databasing. Um, technical synergy is just the easiest win off the bat in a multi-club because it's the one that's the clearest benefit to everyone. Remember to build strong links, not only with your central ownership who employ you directly at the holding level, but also with each individual club you eventually, um, the point of you is to serve them. Make sure that those links are as strong as possible because that just helps the work be used effectively. Provide that solid, consistent big base of work, uh, like I say, with the consistent reports of the same formatting, but with the flexibility to pivot to a, a diverse set of circumstances. So have enough bandwidth and people on hand to be able to do ad hoc bits of work or specialist bits of work that maybe only one club in the group needs at any one time. And finally, if I didn't mention it enough, remember to automate. The workload is massive, so make sure that anything that will be used repeatedly is automated at the earliest possible moment. So that's my talk for today. Um, hopefully uh, found it useful and interesting, and thanks for your time.